Welcome to Decades of Horror in the 1970s. You come to me with a hospital I can't find, and a doctor that nobody knows, and a kidnapped girl who doesn't exist? Go get Aladdin's lamp and make your three wishes come true. Then we can talk. This is episode 132, recorded January 27th, 2021. Gruesome Magazine. Hello once again. I am your host, Doc Rotten, and this podcast is about horror films released between 1970 and 1979. Each episode, my host, Jeff Moore, and I will tackle another classic, or not so classic, film from this wondrous, groovy, gory, and influential decade. With me this week, of course, is the one and only, oh, the smoothie voice of Jeff Moore. <laughs> Say something. Uh, yeah. <laughs> mm. <laughs> I, <I'm, laughs> that is the best. Yeah. Right. Gorge. 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 Uh, also joining us tonight is the one and only Bill Mulligan, writer, screenwriter. <laughs> I, I just, I just, uh, yeah, writer, screenwriter. We'll just keep it going. Uh, director, special effects guru, and all oh. the nice, all around nice guys. He's know, all the nice guys. Wow. All, 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 all nice around guy. There we go. He's nice around guys. Oh, I don't know. Oh. This sounds right. Yeah. I've seen it. I've seen it. It's true. Oh, yeah, well, why? What happened? I got tongue tied. Uh, yeah. Like, just what's what's going on? I'm fine. How are you? I mean, uh, I got my nice new vinyl background. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. lots, lots sweet. of stuff. It, it is sweet. It is and they're not great. that expensive. Yeah, get your own. Everyone should have one. I'm, I'm just gonna make a bunch of them and hang them up in my classroom and just yeah these things these things are great i i, I used to think i'd go to conventions and people would have these behind them I was like boy i hope one day i'm a big published writer that can afford stuff like that well, like 30 bucks yeah my my engineer brain would want to put them all in rows and columns all evenly spaced yeah, <laughs> yeah, not, not yeah. that creative yeah it'd be like bricks all right, also joining us tonight is Chad Hunt, comic artist, co-host of Decades of Horror, the classic era, and all-around smelly guy. No, no, I'm just kidding. He's a great guy. How you doing, well, Chad Hunt? Well, we have shared a couple of hotel rooms together. Uh, well, uh, did, no. did we add smell-o-vision? Smell-o-vision. Uh, well, scratch, scratch and sniff. Just scratch your screen, everybody, and tell me what the smell is. Uh, uh. Oh, no. Uh, what happens in Tennessee stays in Tennessee. Um <laughs> <laughs> Nobody knows what that means. But Chad and myself. All right. After all that funky goodness, what are we talking about tonight? We are talking about uh, a William Girdler film, the first William Girdler film. Mm. Now, for those who uh, are new to us, William Girdler has a special place here on Decades of Horror because it was the favorite, favorite director for Santa Salen Jr., The Black Saint, who uh, launched this podcast with me back <laughs> back in the day. God, years and years ago, it seems like now, mm -hmm. was it? Was it 2013? Was it really 2013? Or was it 2014? I don't know. It was a long time. It was a while. Yeah. Feels like forever now. Uh, but yeah, he loved William Girdler, the Manitou being his favorite. And uh, we talked about all his films a lot. This is, uh, this is, this one's pretty special. It's the first one. Special in our potential affection for it, but not necessarily special in the, in the actual film itself. Well, potential is the opportunity. Yeah, yeah. yeah. sure. Yes. Um, uh, I guess we should just jump to our card here and talk about it. All right, Asylum Saint, released in 1972. It doesn't even have a day or a month. It's just somewhere in 72. Yeah, <laughs> it escaped. Uh, uh, written and directed by William Girdler, along with J. Patrick Kelly III and Patrick J. Kelly, just to confuse the hell out of them. What? Me. And the cast includes Charles Kissinger, Carla Borelli, and Nick Jolly, among others. Tagline is, love slaves of Satan, torture to blood, dripping death. I kind of like that. Uh, yeah, synopsis. that's a great tagline. Uh, synopsis is, a young woman finds herself held against her will in an eerie mental asylum by the sinister Dr. Specter. And his masculine look at <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. She begins to suspect that the visions of horror she's experienced are not nightmares and that she is due to be sacrificed to the one or the evil one. The evil one. Um, yeah. Asylum of Satan. 
Uh, what, so, what, so, Doc, I, can, can I request a quick uh, reading of one of the other taglines? Um, yes, please do so. Okay. This was in the print ad in Louisville when it debuted. See, love slabs of love slay. God, oh, oh, what's Lord. going on today? Love slabs. Hmm. See, love slaves of Satan meet their dreadful death on his love slab. There you go. See, <laughs> shrouded nightmare creatures that will haunt you forever. See, Satan, Satus, Doctor Specker, Specter, Specker. Oh my God! It's just getting worse. <laughs> his passion, death, his desire. Each patron will receive a free soul protection button. Oh, I just think these have like these, you know. Out of, I want to see that movie. Taglines. These are like the best taglines. I think. Oh yeah, yeah I want to see Doctor Specter. That's what I want to. There's a, there's a hint Dr. of William Dr. Castle Becker, in that. Right? Yeah. Who, whoever wrote the tagline should have wrote the script. <laughs> Those are great. <laughs> hey, this can you still get a soul up. protector button? Because you know that I would could be use cool. All the help I could get. Yeah. Yeah. Have to check on eBay. You guys. All right. What we're going to do tonight is we're going to give our first impression of the movie when we first saw it, oh. and then uh, what we thought, and then we're going to, after all that, we're going to talk about the film a little bit, and then we're going to wrap things up with our final thoughts, a score. We'll give it a score. What the hell? And our favorite scene. Um, and then, do we have any? Do we have feedback tonight, Jeff? Maybe no. Maybe we no. Or maybe we, yes, we no. do, but I didn't. I didn't pull it up unless you got right. it, Andy. So no, I do not. So next week, look forward to yes. our no, next episode. I will. I will get it. Uh, uh, yeah, there's nothing like putting, um, yeah, just throwing Jeff right out in the road. It's uh, that's all right. It's always a fun thing to watch. All right, let's. Do I should have acted like I knew what I was talking about and just said no, not today. <laughs> <laughs> I, th I think maybe no is the greatest response of all time. I'm going to immediately maybe use it very often no. this week. <laughs> yeah. uh, maybe no what does that even mean let's don't keep our audience in suspense any longer chat hunt i've uh asked you to go first sir what was when did you first see this what was your first impression um and all that goodness i first saw this yesterday yeah, yesterday for the very first time and boy that's my, that's it. That's all I got. <laughs> oh, <No. girl. laughs> uh, um, mm -hmm. uh, whew, I was a little, I was a little confounded by this, by this yeah. movie. Uh, and we're spoiling this, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Please, Is it possible? When we that's finally, cool. when we finally got to the end to see, see the devil and this creature comes out and this mask. I literally thought that it was just some cult leader guy with a fake mask on in the context of the movie. I, yeah. No, no. This is a reasonable thought. Ooh, oh, oh my God. Saint, I love you, man. I love you. I know you love William William Girdler. But holy crap. Holy crap. I, this was give me the Manitou or uh Day of the Animals any any day. Uh yeah. I mean, and, and to be fair, this is his first movie. And it, and it is a really really low budget, but it it's um, a lot of the other uh, effects in there gave me the creeps, like some of the the the, the lady that got bitten by the insects, um, and that kind of um, the snakes as well. Yeah, and the snakes. Yeah, they, yeah. They were some really, and the guy in the hallway with the, uh, the rotten teeth and yeah, and the guy hanging out. For some reason, those were really unsettling. Uh, effects and, and for me, sometimes the cheaper the budget and uh, the creepier the effects are to me for some reason. I don't know how I don't know how that that works, but I don't know. But it just makes it makes them look more unsettling. I think sometimes mm -hmm. when, when you and, uh, and that. so, but yeah, yeah. You can you can you can move on from me right now. I have. I have <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Jeff Moore, you're up next, sir. When did you first see this and what was your first impression? Uh, I saw this uh, a couple of weeks ago when I was looking for my next pick and stumbled on a William Girdler movie that I hadn't, I suppose I heard about it, but I'd never seen it available anywhere. 
Um, and so I watched it and well, I watched part of it two weeks ago. <laughs> I, fin <laughs> I finished it, uh, watched it over again yesterday. Um, and I think I, I totally agree with what Chad is saying. It's really, really low budget. It's really, um, it's, it's, uh, what's the word I want? It's real, it's rough. It's really, <laughs> it's really, really rough. <laughs> and it's not very well written, not very well acted. But I think there are some flashes of a good eye in terms of like what Chad was saying. There are some creepy things in there. And I agree with all the stuff he said. And I'm also going to throw in the hooded people that the first time I saw them like out on the lawn, I thought they were like Ku Klux Klan or something. Yeah, me too. Um, they have these hooded robes on and the, uh, the hoods are, they always have their heads bowed and the hoods stick up, you know, like a cone. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and they don't talk, they don't do anything. In fact, the people that work in the place don't talk or do anything either. I mean, they just stand there motionless with no expression. Um, except for good old Dr. Spector and his Spector. alter ego. Um, so yeah, and it it hit me, and I mean, this is I've mentioned this before. One of my phobias was being wrong, wrongfully locked up in an asylum, and not being able to get out, and that's hmm. that always makes me anxious. Hmm. So anyway, I, I I you know, <laughs> and and uh, I, yeah yeah well, um, I. I I like the red. I, I, I sort of like the thing. I, and I thought it was decent for, I don't know, what is the budget on this is estimated at 50,000. I mean, this, this movie didn't even have an official release date and IMDb. It just says 1972 uh, the whole year, I guess. Yep. Um, Drive-ins drive across the country. Yes. Mm -hmm. So anyway, that the snakes in the pool got me, the guy with the mask, the, the uh, actually, I I kind of like the Satan thing, even though you know he didn't. They got a lot of soft focus and and uh, red light and uh, don't look too close. But it was sort of a I don't know. I'd wear that mask at Halloween. <laughs> oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> anyway, I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> All right, Bill Mulligan, sir. Certainly, you saw this back in the '70s. When did oh you no. When did you first see Asylum of Satan? Uh, just a few days before Jeff did is when yeah. I saw it. Uh, when, when he announced that we're that we're going to watch it, I, I sought it out. I had never, I'd never seen it in a video store. I don't remember ever. The only time I might have heard about it is just looking up William Girdler, and and it, and it, that is the in, the only interest that it really has for mm -hmm. me is is that here's a guy who did become a name that we're we're kind of fond of and did some pretty cool movies. And sometimes when you see a, a person's first movie, you see, ah, there's the, there's the hint that maybe they're going to go on to something greater. But no, if I saw this movie and I didn't know who was involved when they said, what do you think these people are going to go on to do? I said, I think they're going to go on to become really big and in installing industrial carpeting or anything <laughs> other than making movies. There's not a lot here to grab onto. There's a couple of individual shots the the scene with the, the white hooded people in the dining room with a single egg on the plate. Okay, that's a cool shot. But you know you're kind of in trouble when you're looking for shots that justify watching the movie. It's it's a it's a narrative mess. It's got a few likable characters and, and I, I kind of I like the main actress and, and I, I like um Kissinger because I didn't figure out that he was playing a double role. So kudos to him for that. Spoiler but, yes yeah, but it looks awful. <laughs> it's it's out of focus, and when you shoot in red, it's hard to focus anyway. So even more, and maybe that helps the the bad monster costumes. But this this is not a good movie. <laughs> I, I, it's low budget, and I certainly would not want people to look at my first movie and and say this is this is the best it's ever going to be. And he did get better. So, you know, his first movie was an actual movie with a plot. It had a couple of things that were tough to do: snakes in a pool. That was pretty creepy. Um, but I just I don't know. I don't know what to say about this movie. There's there's not a whole lot to say. It was it was kind of tough going. I never hit the fast forward button. 
just on principle. Mm -hmm. But just this, put, <laughs> this put my principles to the test. <laughs> oh my goodness! Well, I, I'm going to say that uh, I too the, the, this past week was the first time I've ever seen this. I only knew of it um, in passing because, like you said, it's a William Girdler film. We talk about William Girdler a lot on this podcast. But I even forgot when Jeff mentioned it that that, that was that movie, right? And I was like, "What were you talking about?" And I was like, "Yeah," and uh, and we started looking at it that night, and I was like, "Oh, oh, oh, oh!" Um, <laughs> so I watched it, and uh, everything you're saying is absolutely correct. But it is it is kind of the quintessential drive-in ex movie experience that you would get in the seventies. This was always always the B picture, right? Always the second one that would come out was this mm -hmm. kind of you know uh you know you you get like squirm which is kind of similar but in 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 the yeah. makeup of how it was made not mm. really about the story but but maybe a lot better <laughs> uh but um i don't know it, it i found a charm to it i i don't think i was ever bored it never really put me to a test bill like you were saying i get it i get it because it is it is uh it's it's not really well made uh, but uh, I, I don't know. I felt like the actors, there was an honesty and earnest to them that comes across, mm. you know, that, that, that helps a lot when, you know, you don't feel like, I mean, even though the acting's kind of wooden and stiff, it, it, it wasn't, I've seen a lot worse acting. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Even though this is bad, I've seen a lot worse. So, so in the end it was, it was stupid. It's bad, <laughs> but I, you know, I'm glad I watched it. I, you know, will I? Ever yeah. watch it? I once is enough. <laughs> but, um, I, it is absolutely one I want to check out. And now I want to see three on a, a meat hook more, um, mm -hmm. which I, 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 I knew I know of that film more than I know of this one. Um, and of course, I've I've been dying to see Abby. Uh, yeah. That you, you know, it's hard to. You, the only one you can see is like this really shitty copy out there on the, on the interwebs. And I'm not going to do it. I'm gonna. I want to. I want to wait for a, a nice copy. Maybe there's one out there. Maybe Jeff will tell me. Yeah, I'll have a criterion. Oh yeah, yeah. It's a Japanese uh, <laughs> free market copy. Uh, but it has an interesting history. One day we'll it does. Do, it does. One day we'll do that. One day we'll do three on a meat hook. Um, we've done Grizzly Day of the Adams and the uh, Day of the Adams family. Day of the Animal <laughs> and the Manitou. Um, yeah. But you got But you got to think that. Within four years, he's doing Grizzly. Five years, the Day of the Animals, since yeah. he's doing the Manitou, and was going on to more films. Of course, he uh, tragically died in the helicopter. Yeah. You, you, know what that, you know what that means, Doc. We've What's done that? four William Girdler films. Is that, is that right? Um, hmm. you, you might have done more Charles Kissinger films than a lot of other horror actors. Uh, <laughs> not more than Peter Cushing. I'm telling you right. Uh, now. No, no, not 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 the <laughs> mainstays. But I'm not sure how many how many actors have we done four movies of? Uh, and he's in yeah. all of the all but two of the Girdler films, I think. Yeah, and not much uh, else. Not no, much. nothing else. Not uh, well, except he was a horror host for a, a late oh, night movie. Was he? Like, oh wow! In oh, Louisville. Wow. Yeah, but we'll, we'll be talking about William Girdler, I would imagine, here quite a bit in a little bit. But uh, I, I guess we should start with like some poster action, right? Because it had some interesting uh, posters. This this is actually the, um, what, do call, what do you call it, like the press pamphlet thing that they would pass mm -hmm. out, uh, mm -hmm. press book, um, more so than the poster. But a lot of people, you know, use yeah. it as a poster. Um, well, they warned you that there's going to be a lot of red. Yeah, and it's certainly, yeah. And then, of course, there's your mask up there. Now, there are rumors, and some people believe the rumors to be true, that that mask and the whole monkey outfit that it's on mm -hmm. <laughs> was actually made and used in, but not kept, in Rosemary's Baby. I'm calling horse shit on that. <laughs> what? Which made me think, you know, and I was trying to think about where this fit. This was post Rosemary's Baby, pre Exorcist. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it does have a, a little bit of a Rosemary's. Yeah. And look, look, it's not a bad designed costume, except for the eyes, which 
are so obviously fake that they make everything Ooh. else look fake. Take those eyes out of the equation, and and you have a fairly gnarly looking little suit, but it's completely immobile. It doesn't, you know, it, it looks like when mm. Chad was saying, I fully expected they were going to do the Scooby Doo thing and pull the head off. It's like, oh, it was Doctor Specter all along, or his yeah, sister, or whatever. <laughs> you know, Doctor Specter. I like the mask. Oh, as it is, as it is now, I mean, he looks like he should be in the band Guar. Uh, oh yeah. my God! Yes. His also, eyes, oh, yeah, yeah, like he does. Black holes of googly into eyes. The depths of yeah. oh also, listen, if you're if you ever go into an asylum or if you ever go anywhere and there's a guy, Doctor Specter, he's practically daring you to, to, you know, of course he's evil. Why, why do people never get that? I'm Doctor Sinister, you know. Oh yes, I I come from the North North New England Sinisters. Uh, you know, it's like Green Lantern. Yeah. Oh yeah, I like to meet you. This is Sinistro. You're like, ooh, uh, isn't he like bad news? I mean, his name is like evil. Oh no. Once you get to know him, yeah, he's a nice Specter. guy. Once you get to know him, yeah. Wait, the devil always like, hides in plain sight. Sounds like one of those Saturday morning cartoons, like Doctor Shrinker and all those. Right. Not cartoons, but the live action shows they used to have on. Oh, yeah. Dr. Yeah. No, yeah. No. Dr. Specter, isn't that like a comic book character for? Yeah, it's a. Uh, oh, yeah. I think it's an old Charlton. Charles, is it Charles Charlton or Charles? Gold Key or something? Or? Gold Key, one of those. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I think it's part of the. I don't know. I'm. I'm. I. I remember the name, but I. You know. Um, and and, and also the comic are, book. Go ahead. The comic book Doctor Specter also liked to dress up in women's clothes. He was ahead of his time and uh, didn't <laughs> sell many copies. So. Was he a lumberjack too? Oh yeah. But that's I, okay. I have no idea where we're going with this. I, <laughs> I'm still so, so so. Why would they say it was in Rosemary's Baby? Where in Rosemary's Baby would, would right. something like that have popped? Well, up? it wasn't used. It wasn't used. It was. Oh. It, well, it was used. It was filmed, but it didn't. Maybe. Yeah, okay. So if you there is actually a William Girdler website out there. It, I don't think mm -hmm. it's been updated since 2002, but it is out there, and they they go into it on the site. Hmm. Uh, so check it out on on the William Girdler website. And they, uh, there's the, if you if you want to stretch this theory out a little bit, there are, there is a scene where the shadow is seen where she, because she never really sees it, right? Right, right, right. There's a yeah. shadow, and the shadow meets that. And there's this whole thing about Polanski, um, you know, designed the costume. There's pictures of the costume that looks very similar to this, um, but it could be, it could be just like a, somebody ripped it off because it wasn't used and they knew about it. But who knows? But yeah, you know, that's the Wuma. Um, but yeah, I mean, this there, there's the there's the black and white. It looks a lot better though up there, to be honest. Yeah, with you. well, yeah, yeah. A lot, good use of a fog machine in this movie. That that fog scene went on forever. Like we get it. There's smoke coming out oh. of the vents. Die already. <laughs> and and bugs somehow. Yeah, those millipedes or centipedes or whatever those were that landed on oh, there. It feels a little padded in some spots, you know. Like we got to stretch this bit. out to make our make little our. Bit. Uh, yeah. little bit okay. So my my favorite character was the cop. Yeah, I just loved him. He was just ranting and raving all the time. And then my uh, my favorite scene is towards the end, where you're talking about the fog machine. Talk about stretching stuff out. They would alternate between the satanic ritual and the cops racing through the night with the blue flashing lights and the music between the two was just, I just was laughing my ass oh my off. Every time they, oh my every time they switched to the cops, I'm like, God, where's the, uh, it, it, it was so black exploitation. I felt like it came yeah. out of yeah. Yeah. It's Starsky and Hutch. Uh, <laughs> yeah. soundtrack. Yes. Yes. Uh -huh. Oh my God! It, but it was—I don't know—it was kind of. And then that was that was what played over the end credits. <laughs> yeah. Chicka chicka wow. Chicka wow chicka wow chicka wow chicka wow. Yeah. Oh man! But you guys didn't tell me that Meathead from All in the Family was in this movie. Ah, that sure looked like his <laughs> <It did. laughs> the hairdo. Yeah. Are you talking about the lead? Yeah. yeah. Do we have a picture of the lead. Chris I don't Duncan. Think I do. No, no, I don't. Really. I don't think I we should have right? No, I don't. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody just picture a uh, meathead from All in the Family. Uh, Rob, yeah. Rob Reiner. Yeah. And a snappy dresser, too. Yeah. Well, I guess we should go ahead and talk about Dr. Spectre because this is Charles Kissinger. You mentioned him. Um, yeah. I, okay. Obviously, that is, well, yeah. 
Yeah, there was no <laughs> a handsome woman. Yeah. But I did not because he also plays a third character in the movie, the the gardener guy that comes out and meets him at the front door. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I did not put these two together until it was revealed, and I felt very stupid by not doing that. <laughs> I was like, oh no. I what was the point of the gardener? I, what was the, the whole thing was weird. Like they was that the reason they that was to give him a reason to put uh, meathead, for lack of a better name, <laughs> in, in jail overnight. Yes, I mean, yeah, because yes. yeah, they went. To, he could take them to the house and they they like dilapidated it real quick and mm -hmm. moved. It. And somehow they don't know everybody's in there. I'm like where did everybody go? <laughs> I don't get it. What's, so so okay because i i was kind of fading in and out at this point so dr specter <laughs> has the power to to morph space time or something and, and make the place i mean that's pretty powerful you think he would have i i don't understand this movie i don't yeah. really know what the purpose of everything was and why it took so long for them i guess they just needed to sacrifice someone well, to satan it well, seems like a convoluted they had to do three things, right? They had to do three, no four things. They had to do four things, right? Hmm. And the last one was the sacrifice of virgin. But and, and she, just, she, just, she, <laughs> just, <laughs> she just got back from a weekend in the mountains with her boyfriend. So yeah, I was I was kind of yeah. questioning the whole I mean you, you could you could spend a weekend without and still be a virgin, but well, but isn't that why the whole thing fell apart at the end? Yeah, that you know it Satan's like virgin. This is oh, like, that, that, yeah, that's she's no man. weird. Man. Yeah, it's clear as mud. Just to be, just to right. Uh, well, yeah. but, but that's what's happening. Yeah. Not only is it hard to see those shots, I couldn't understand a word Satan said. Oh no, I was <laughs> I, I was going to ask you guys: Did anyone was were there no. subtitles or did does anyone? I I Satan if was you, speaking. No, if you there. watch the subtitles on the <laughs> on the Amazon, if you watch the subtitles. <laughs> Oh my God! It's like you're watching a different movie. Those are like the voice recognition type of subtitles. Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, you know, uh, oh my God! How, how did the filmmakers let that happen? How, I mean, how did they not listen and say, "Oh, wait a minute! No one can understand what Satan is saying." I don't uh, think it mattered. I think it was like oh, that works. So her name. <laughs> they don't have the, the, the one. The one. One. Subtitle said, we are now putting the roast in the oven at 350 degrees. <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> oh, no. That's the what lead, I heard. The lead's <laughs> name was Lucinia. And at some point, he says something about Lucinia. Uh, no, she's my fiance. And the subtitles were the senior. No, she's Beyonce. Beyonce. Yeah, <laughs> she's the entree. She's Beyonce. Oh, no, Beyonce. Beyonce. Oh, wow. Yeah, Beyonce. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, and it was like that all through the movie. So you know, but, but and it's when irritating. It came to the devil, and there was nothing there. They yeah. just Satan, came up. Satan. They were having a conversation. This was like you know, it was like all of a sudden it's a Charlie Brown cartoon. Satan, womp 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 womp, womp. <laughs> and the guy's like, but wait, and he's having a conversation. I'm like, this sounds fascinating. Could anyone please explain what Satan just said? Because I think it's sort of the climax of the damn movie, but we'll never know. That didn't um, it didn't. I don't think it would have helped, but. I know. <laughs> There's Carla Pirelli. She played the lead actress. Um, She's pretty. Yeah, I, I thought she was. She was. She was good. Yeah. She had a career too. Yeah. Yeah. So well, tell us about that career there, Jeff. Well, she was in one of those uh, one of those primetime soap opera things, Falcon oh. Crest. Oh, okay. That was a good one. You so sort of she did uh, just like 12 episodes of that. She was on another one called Texas. She did 199 episodes. I think that was a Ooh. daytime soap opera. Must have been, yeah. Um, in the uh, That was like 80 to 82. So she, and you know what? I can see her. She would be a good uh, soap opera star, but she did lots of other TV shows and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, Love American Style. Yeah. Anybody yeah. remember that show? Oh yeah, who wasn't on that show? Multiple times, yeah. The name of the game. Anybody remember that one? I watched yeah. that one. Yeah, that was, uh, it takes those shows theme. kept those shows kept a lot of actors yeah, they, employed, you know. Yeah, they did. Yeah. Especially the Burt Condy. Yes. Ah, Burt Condy. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, uh, is this, is that Wild Wild West? She did a Wild Wild West. She played the Sun Goddess. Ooh. 
Yeah, so there's there's our Dr. Spector again. Yeah. And somebody and she was uh, she was smart. Oh, oh yeah, who he's the guy who fell and, and hurt himself. Huh? Ah! So she was she was smart enough not to do a nude scene in this movie, which I guess she had agreed to do, and yeah. then backed off after she probably saw the quality of the movie. It's like I'm not giving up the goods for Asylum of Satan. That's for mm -hmm. sure. Giving up the goods for Asylum of Satan. <laughs> and, and let me just say to future filmmakers out there, take a lesson from this. If 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 the nude scene is real important to the plot, you better make sure that's the first thing you film. Because once you film your entire movie and your actress gets cold feet at the end, what are you going to do about it? Mm, well, I don't. Now? I have a hard time imagining. You know, maybe it was the the bath scene where the creepy, uh, whatever her name is. What was her name? Oh, Martine. 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 Yeah. It's going here. Let me wash your back. Go yeah, that's that's probably what it was, and and. Yeah, so, nudity wasn't necessary in this movie. <laughs> like it, it was almost like it hurt. She was like, yeah. uh, although Martine had a great shot when at the steps when I don't know, there was a nice little chuckle and hands out. And then, oof. yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> I liked not to jump too far, but I liked the final, almost the final scene. Then they kept having more final scenes, but I couldn't. Yeah, know what was going on. but the final scene where the the boyfriend looks back and sees something downstairs and goes, yeah. ah, that nah. I kind of actually kind of like that, but then they should have ended it right there. Yeah. yeah. Well, it has that old fashioned zoom in on the freeze frame. Yeah. Right. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> it's the other ending and that I had no idea what was going on. I, I don't know what happened after uh, that. There was a couple more. Yeah. I, yeah. I should have just stopped right there. Yeah. You got to quit at some point. This isn't Lord of the Rings. Just, you know, the freeze frame was fine. Credits roll. Let us go mm -hmm. home. Um, I guess here's some of the the deaths and some of the you know we have all the little Satanists slash yeah at the table there yeah. Yeah. enjoying their egg enjoying their egg and then our guy here with the bad but awesomely creepy makeup and mm -hmm. the, it is it is it is terrible yeah the top the top row of white teeth this guy down the, here yeah. Yeah. He opens his mouth, the teeth go hurt, and just fall. Oh, out. that's even creepier. Yeah. There it is. You know, I get what Chad said. You're going to make me how, go back and look at that now. Yeah, no, we gotta watch like, it now. like how low budget, low budget movies, sometimes the effects are more compelling. And I think it's because, like, if you're watching a Herschel Gordon Lewis movie where some poor woman gets her tongue ripped out, you know that this is yeah. not a silicon appliance. This is not anything fancy. This is they went and got a sheep's tongue doused it in pine saw so it wouldn't go bad stuck it in a cooler with no ice and then actually put it in her mouth and then removed it infinitely more disgusting than actually if her tongue had been ripped out of her mouth the making of the movies is more repulsive than the premise of the movie yeah like if you yeah, saw that guy a... coming down the hall like she did i i'm not gonna stand there and go hey you look fake no i'm yeah. running but that guy looks creepy the one on the bottom he, he just looks creepy there's actually something kind of effectively demonic about it, like like yeah. it's trying to look human, but it doesn't, and it's sort of stuck somewhere in between. Mm -hmm. I have no idea what his role is in the movie, though, but... No! Does anyone? Uh, I ooh. think Satan explained it at the end. It was... <laughs> so, that explains it all. Exactly. All right. I keep, I keep teasing everybody with this, so I guess we should go ahead and do William Thirdler, right? Yeah. Three mm. on a meat hook. I have no idea what to expect with that. I have not seen it, but I'm looking forward to it's, it. It's, it's kind of an Ed Gein, sort of an Ed Gein sort of thing. Yeah. But it has, and I'll say now for our audience out there, go look at the trailer on YouTube. Maybe the greatest trailer that has ever been made for a movie. You think I'm being facetious. I am one. This is my serious face. That trailer <laughs> is awesome. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I've seen that face before. <laughs> but I, would, would this face lie? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he was going to say that's my Gabby Hayes face. That's what I got. <laughs> yeah. Sheriff Ricochet? That's his Waller Houston dance face. <laughs> All right. Basically, uh, might be one uh, film that many people recognize. Abby, maybe, maybe not. Yeah. Uh, that mm -hmm. for me is like one I. I'm That's dying. kind of a holy grail at this point. Yeah. I've never seen Abby, and it, they're they're making it hard to see Abby. It's got William Marshall, but Grizzly's well, got one of the. 
Yeah, Grizzly's got one of the greatest posters ever. That's Neil Adams. Oh yeah, and, Neil Adams. Um, that poster will would hang proudly on any wall. That's that's just an just a, he knows how to draw a bear. I wish the yeah. bear in the movie looked one tenth as scary as that poster. <laughs> yeah. Well, Abby Abby was running on Shutter for a while. Um, oh, how did we miss it? How? That, that was a couple of years ago, but uh, but it's yeah. really crappy though, right? Yeah. Well, bad. well oh, it's, uh, you couldn't find it anywhere else at the time. Well, I, can, I mean, too. you can find it, uh, but it's it's you know it's like it's crappy. What was that one we were going to do with uh, Jack Palance at one point, but the print was so bad. Uh, was it Hyde? No, I was thinking it was crazy. I don't know. He, yeah. And he plays a cult. Uh, like a satanic worship character, but hmm. you start watching it and it's just as it's bad as I want to see bad, Abby. Yeah. You just can't. Yeah. Yeah. I'm waiting for somebody to restore it. I don't know. Well, they have it. Okay. Ab, well, there's, when we get to Abby, there's a whole backstory about being sued by one of right. them. Right. But uh, not until after it actually made its money. <laughs> they let it well, make that's it. the way to do it. So, uh, but uh, maybe the reason we can't find it anywhere is they're working on a, blu-ray or something that's usually the case uh maybe maybe and also maybe. Uh, it it actually all the other films got sold off to one company and abby went mm -hmm. to a different one so there's that too. Uh, okay. uh, maybe, uh, maybe we should have waited for the uh, asylum of satan blu-ray which i'm sure would uh that yes. might have yeah hey we got god monster and, and flats and uh yeah. Ape and uh Ape. what else Ape. Ape. we got Served it by God. <laughs> yeah. all right. Those movies were all in focus, though, so they had that going. Well, on. that's true. <laughs> uh, Day of the Animals, of course, is a, a really fun movie, and yeah. uh, the Man Two, of course, has a place. What can you say? The Blu-ray for that one is actually really sweet too. Hmm. Finally came out, and uh, yeah, and that was that was his final movie, right? Yes, it was yeah. his final movie. And that's so, Black uh, Saint's favorite movie, right? It's, oh yeah, oh absolutely. So you gotta say, Girdler went out on a high note. I mean, he, Manitou is overly ambitious for what he had, but uh, there's worse crimes than that. It certainly uh, kept his crazy style, though. Oh, yeah, yeah. Wow. And you kind of wonder where he was going to go from there, because that's that is quite a trajectory from Asylum of Satan to the Manitou. Well, but, you know, thinking about it, the Manitou has a story, too, that's all over the place. I mean, you've got... It does. The, the traveling around, talking to different experts, getting different info, but it's a lot. It ties together a whole lot better. Yeah. So With I guess some, you could say he, he didn't tell simple stories simply. He made them, you know, he, he was doing more than... than was necessary. It's just that that did not work with Asylum of Satan. There just wasn't enough there. To, to make it work. It happens. Hey, it's again, it's the first movie. And, yeah. and, and clearly I think you could say he did prove that he had the chops to keep making movies and movies that are a bit challenging. I mean, day of the animals. Okay. That's not an easy movie to shoot without losing a bunch of people to the aforementioned animals. You know, mm. it's, Oh, you don't want to work with animals or kids. And then that one had lots of animals. So, you know, he, he, he did some cool things, uh, you know. Yeah. It's definitely a story, a story there, and will always be one of the great what ifs in in genre fiction. Where, what would he have gone on to do? Well, was it the the one that he was he was working on one right when they had the helicopter crash? Mm -hmm. Was he? Uh, and this one lo was looking like he was going to get a bigger budget. Is that true, or did yeah. I dream that? I think that's true. Yeah. I just don't remember what the project. Cat, what cat the project tail. was. Cat tail. <laughs> <laughs> cat, cat, cat. Oh, man. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what's interesting is that to, uh, so just before, so to get the funding for that film that we're talking about, the one that, you know, he was going to get to, you know, that he, he was actually flying out to do shoot lo uh, locations when hmm. the accident happened. He, uh, he actually, um, gave back the rights to Asylum of Satan and I think we hope as well. <laughs> Back to the financers so they could start, you know, getting money. Apparently, they were getting money somewhere. Um, yeah, so, wow. Yeah. That, that, he strike, that's a hard bargain he's striking there. Hey, he just, well, you know, he was, but he was really, uh, to talk about Girdler some more, when he got sued, he said, yeah, I made it. I made it. <laughs> he thought he made yeah. it because he got sued. 
but there's also uh, I don't know what version of the film we saw. We were I watched it on Amazon Prime. Did you guys watch it on Amazon? Prime? Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Um, but apparently the version most people had seen up until uh, 2000 and something. Um, there was another uh, an original version was uh, unearthed a 35 millimeter print. I it, this the the shot the scene the movie I saw didn't feel like it was cut from a 35. No, millimeter. not at all. It felt no. rather uh, super eight. Yeah, I'm like it was cut off the back of a cereal box. Uh, or, <laughs> A copy of a copy of a copy, right? Yeah, it was brutal. But there's a, a number of, it's supposed to have more shots in it. And some of those shots are in the trailer that, you know, so there are there are shots in the trailer that aren't in the film. They suspect that some of those are shots. Now, we may have seen those shots, but one of them in, is the Satan is shooting um, fire out of his eyes. Fire at the face. Hmm. Fire shooting out of his eyes. I don't remember seeing fire coming out of his eyes. Yeah. Right. I might have blinked and missed that, so no, I'm, I'm, you know, that sounds like the most expensive special effect in the movie. Why would you cut yeah. that out? And I can't believe it's because, well, it looked crappy. Hey, have you seen the rest <laughs> of the movie, pal? That's what I was thinking too. Come on. Uh, Maybe they just meant the eyes were falling out. Because <laughs> that's what it looked like. <laughs> yeah. Oops. Little on springs. Yeah. And boing, boing, boing. Oh, wow, 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 wow. Walka, 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 walka springs. I, uh, I don't know. I, this movie is something else. And yeah. if you if you are a horror fan of the seventies, and if you really loved Drive In, I don't know. It just it made me feel like that, right? It is Drive In stuff. It, it feels oh, yeah. like it should be crammed in between six other all night, like a drive yeah. all night drive in. Right, right. Yeah. It, should be, it should be between two Andy Milligan movies, yeah. and then That's you'd good. say, hey, you know, Asylum of Satan wasn't nearly as bad as some of the other right, crap right. I had to sit through. So <laughs> there's that. Yeah, maybe throw in we, Have we ever done an Andy Milligan movie? I don't think we have. Uh, okay. Well there's some there's, there's, o- there's only one I would even remotely consider suggesting. There, what's that? There. What's that? Tell us. It's called Blood. Blood. And that's it's that's it's that's terrible, true. but for Andy Milligan, it's it's pretty good. Ooh. So yeah. Oh, <laughs> we, I might I might pick that one day just so we can talk about Andy Milligan without ha- actually having to watch all of his movies. Because yeah. and sometime we should just do all these directors that just did schlocky movies like Eddie Romero, right? Is yeah, movie? yeah, he had some, but he had some fun stuff. Yeah, uh, did he do he? Um, what are those Mad Doctor of Blood Mad Island? Mad Doctor of Blood Island movies, yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, I can't believe that. Oh my yeah. God. Uh, I mean, there's that in uh, what Al Williams and Al Adams and Al, Al Adamson. Adams. There's Adam, a, there's oh, a there's a really good um, documentary I think on Shutter about Al Adamson. Yeah, which is yeah, sad mm-hmm. but good stuff. Yeah, <laughs> but we've done Dracula versus Frankenstein, oh, so we've done the greatest Al Adamson movie of all. So, uh, which may be one of the the greatest bad movies in horror history. I know, you know everybody talks about Plan Nine, but I don't Ooh. know. Oh, oh. That movie has a special place for me. That yeah. So it's it's so it's so, yeah, it's so inept. It's, yeah, and it's crunched like a couple films crunched together. So yeah, that's great history. But uh, I, th- these films would be right up in there, right? So yeah, because when you go to a drive-in with six horror movies, you're probably not going there to watch the movies. Now that's why I went to the drive-in, but that's the, the sad <laughs> tale of me in high school. So yeah, nobody else cared. Wild, wild, wild. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, you know, is there anything else we can say about this movie? There's not a whole lot to, to spiel about this one. It, it's just, uh, it's just yeah. one of those films. Uh, there's a whole, there's a whole three-hour show about all these kind yeah. of movies that uh, are like it that came out. Yeah, there's a billion movies from the 70s that are just like this. Just like this. And But this one just happens to be directed by William Gertler. That's right. It. That's, say, that's its big thing. I will say, and I think, Bill, you, you can second me on this because you mentioned it on the pre-show, is that it really is fun to find a movie from the 70s that, one, you hadn't seen, but two, maybe you hadn't really even heard of. And yeah. there are some. And I... I mean, I've read so many books about the 70s and, and they are these movies 
this one might be, but other movies that I've seen aren't even listed in those books. Mm-hmm. Right. right? They're supposed to be comic right. books, right? Um, and they're not in there because they're obscure or... A lot of them were regional, too. Like, you know, they're, they made movies down in Florida that I don't think ever escaped from Florida and just played in the drive-ins down there. Um, some Ooh. of the ones uh, like Death Curse of Tartu would occasionally show up on Creature Features, but a lot of them just... I, I, I heard of Sting of Death, but I never got to see it until fairly recently. So I think some of these regional ones, some of them are probably lost. I mean, how many prints of Asylum of Satan did they even make? Mm-hmm. And if nobody bothered to save them, they probably got tossed out or lost in a fire. So who knows? There there may be some gems out there waiting to be discovered. And I hope they hurry up because I'm not getting any younger. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and there's, there's, there's one that we should do. It's called The Wolfman. 1979 is that the one from north carolina owens north carolina and um uh, yeah that that's kind earl of Owensby, earl yeah. owensby yeah. yeah who who has a distinction that m- most people don't know about that he has he made the most 3d movies from one studio back in wow. the back in that that, wow. that little spiel of mm-hmm. movies that rottweiler is the one most people know rottweiler but he did yeah. too so but uh, the Wolfman, I remember, I remember that one, and it's it's on Amazon Prime, and I watched it again. So that might be one that we have to consider hmm. consider in this wonderful year of twenty twenty one. Yeah, it's got the hometown thing going. Yeah. 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 All right, so we're, we're we're not even talking about the movie anymore. So let's go ahead. Yeah. And- <laughs> uh, let's give our final thoughts. Nobody's complaining. Let's give our final thoughts about. <laughs> can we talk about Manitou some more? Uh, we can. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Asylum of Satan, and uh, you know, if you want to score, feel free. If you feel froggy, jump right. And uh, we will. Uh, I want we you need to. Pick, I want you to pick a scene. I do want to hear your favorite scene. Oh God, you're killing us here. Yeah, what did you say, Jeff? We need to. I was going to say we will. Uh, we need to link the other uh, Girdler episodes. Oh, we do. In the blog oh. or in the comments That's underneath. A good idea. Uh, they, there's some wonderful stuff, especially the Mantu. You definitely want to mm-hmm. pick, catch that. Uh, oh, and we got to see it at the Carolina Theater. Yeah, Raleigh, yeah, yeah. on the yeah. big screen. There. Lucky, lucky. Awesome, awesome. That was such a good, and it was you know dedicated to Santos as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Did yeah. did did Santos ever talk about this one? Had he seen this? He talked about all of these. Yes. <laughs> he he loved. This guy's filmography, <laughs> yeah, everything. Uh, but I, I couldn't, I wouldn't. But again, it, it didn't connect. You know, three on a meter. Yeah. You can't forget that title. But this uh, one, kind of like my mini one. In. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, all right, let's do this. Let's wrap things up. I think Chad, maybe you were first, right? So Me. Uh, mm-hmm. Give us your, give us your spiel, sir. Uh, this is not a movie I will ever, ever, ever watch again. Oh, she. Uh, but, <laughs> but, but it's a movie I'm glad I watched. You know, um, like I said, it's a Girdler film, and it was interesting to see his first film, you know, and sort of see, I think Bill alluded at the beginning how he got better, and he did get better. Um, So it's interesting to see how he started out and see little things here and there that would just get better with each each film he did. Um, So for that fact alone, for that fact, I'm glad we watched it, and I'm glad we covered it. Um, a favorite scene. Um, uh, I want to say the fog scene. No, the fog scene. <laughs> yeah, the the one that really made me laugh the most was, was the snakes. The snake scene. Um, Which is sister for, double for it, by the way. Oh, oh, really? Yeah, the actress that the played the blind girl did not want to do this shot. Oh, okay. Me. But it was hilarious, just the fake snakes and the gigantic fangs the snakes had. Mm-hmm. And, and uh, if you're a snake guy like like me, you know that that's just absurdity <laughs> at its finest. Uh, but it was just it, it. Some of it will make you giggle. Some of it will make you laugh. But that the snake scene was sort of my favorite as far as funny. <laughs> you know, it made me laugh. So it made you laugh. Yeah. All right, Jeff Moore, give us your spiel, sir. Well, you got to watch this. I mean, first apologize, Jeff. Yeah. Not apologize. Yeah. I mean, no apologies for this. I'm not apologizing for this. Maybe I would have if it wasn't William Girdler, but I'm not apologizing for that. I, mm-hmm. I, 
I actually, I, I, I went in kind of expecting something similar. And uh, so I, I wasn't disappointed, <laughs> but uh, I kind of enjoyed it. I enjoyed sort of the uh, off the wall nature of it. You know, the, yeah. the way it ran back and forth at that, I don't know wh- why, but I love that cop. It, every time he turned up, he he would have some rant about it. He does another one about how Dr. Spector, uh, yeah, we looked into this Dr. Spector and, uh, he was looked into several times for devil worshiping, but we couldn't get anything on him. But he was suspected of murder. I'm like, what kind yeah. of a line is there? I mean, <laughs> uh, anyway, there was there was stuff like that. Uh, well, he, he said he said we picked him up for devil worshiping, and then five yeah. seconds later, he goes, "I can't arrest somebody for devil worshiping." What do you? Yeah. Do? Well, yeah. Why'd you pick him up in the first place? <laughs> and we suspected him of murder. Um, yeah, and weird little things, uh, you know, uh, I can't think, oh, Lucina, she's in there and, and Dr. Spector or somebody comes to get her to take her somewhere and she goes and she, most people, you wouldn't put this in there, I don't think. She says, she turns and goes, just a minute while I put on my shoes and she stands there and puts her shoes on before she walks out. I just thought, uh, this is weird. This is weird. Like, number one, you don't have to say you're putting your shoes on. Everybody knows you're putting yeah. your shoes on. But number two, why wouldn't you just cut from that and go, nobody's going to remember she was standing there with her shoes off. I, I don't know. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, just strange stuff like that. But I, I'm sorry, guys. I liked, I liked the devil mask. I'm not sorry. I liked it. Um, and I, I guess I'm kind of glad it was fuzzy. <laughs> it would have looked, looked worse if it was in focus. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm taking some of that. I'll, I'll take parts of that scene for my favorite one. Um, but I wish I could have heard what he said. If they come out with some kind of magically uh, refocused one and you can understand what the devil says, I'm going to watch it again. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, my God. Refocus. Uh, all right. Bill Mulligan. <laughs> If they come out with that version, I will watch it again, but I will hit the fast forward button all the way to the last <laughs> 10 minutes and see. It. I mean, I guess that's got to be my favorite scene because up until then, there's a lot of asylum and not much Satan. So when he, when the monster finally shows up, is he the greatest monster ever? No. Can I understand a word that's fallen out of his pie hole? Nope. But it does resolve things. And, and okay, so there you are. I don't think I'll ever watch this again. Um and, and I would only recommend it as here's a good example of an encouragement for, for filmmakers that your first movie is probably not going to be good. Some filmmakers, their first movie is great to the point that it discourages people, I think, from getting into film. Because you'll see like early David Cronenberg when he was just a student filmmaker and you're like, oh, this guy's a genius. I'm nothing like that. Most people are nothing like that. Their first attempts are crappy. And, but they stick with it. And sometimes, sometimes they get better. Some folks, God bless them, Ed Wood, H.G. Lewis, some of these folks were the same filmmaker from beginning to end, no growth at all. And we love them for it. But, you know, you can improve, you you learn. And um, this, this movie definitely is the beginning of what ended up being a pretty, pretty good curve. But no, it's, uh, I wouldn't recommend it. Other than other than that, like so that. the beginning of a really good curve. Yeah, uh, there's. Are you? I, I think faint guess, praise. I guess you're passing on a favorite scene. I know uh, the ending. The uh, <laughs> Satan, Mister Sataney Mumble Man. So Satan Mumble Man. Uh, yeah. I, I Chad, I like that you, 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 you mentioned that you want to see like uh, a director. You like you want to see their first work and see their roots. Cool. And as you know, we're comic book fans and. Um, when I was really into collecting them, we would do that with artists we liked, right? yes, especially in the heyday. Mm-hmm. And I remember, like when the Image guys were getting big before they made Image, and you would go back and find their, their, you know, their uh, uh, independent work, and it was mm-hmm. like, oh, oh my god, god. Ooh, yeah, man, that, this is yeah. this is rough. But it, it it like this, it showed the promise, right? You could see mm-hmm. the promise in there. And then in, if you go to like to the seventies and you look at John Byrne's earliest work, right, or John. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, Wheelie and the Chopper Bunch. Yeah. yeah really? Well, I look at my early work and I go, "Why did they even give me? <laughs> why did they give me what work? You know." Uh, but uh, so, um, I kind of liken my uh, affection for 
certain directors and going back and looking at their early work is it's very similar to that, mm -hmm. that kind mm -hmm. of yeah mentality that you you know you just want to do that but it, it is is a really interesting experience because one it's very local to the you know the the Kentucky <laughs> locations that have, mm -hmm. it feels you know it feels there, there's some there's this weird honesty to it I think I mentioned that early you know it, it there's an authentic authenticity to their enthusiasm mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. that kind of is better than their acting undertones at the time. But yeah, it's actually, I don't know. For me, it's that, that experience. I, I kind of enjoyed it. It's, is it a good movie? No, no, it is not a good movie. It is not a God awful bad movie either. Um, but yeah, it's pretty it, bad. Maybe not God awful. It's not mm -hmm. God awful. But it, it's it's not a good it's not good either. Um, <laughs> it's somewhere yeah, magic place in between. Uh, if you are a Girdler fan or a '70s fan, uh, there's no reason not to check this out. And if you want to, you know, fast, I will not look poorly upon you if you have to hit the fast forward button quite often to get to you know the good yeah. part. Uh, that's fine. Do that. Um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I enjoyed watching it. Will I watch it again? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you. Uh, favorite scene. Um, yeah, it's kind of hard not to pick that last scene. Although I, I, you guys mentioned it earlier. It's like when it's all coming together and they keep cutting back and forth between the car, mm -hmm. or the, the random cop cars and the funky music. And I don't know. It, it's just, there's so much in this film. I mean, you could, you could choose the the lady in the wheelchair and all the fake rubber snakes and or not snakes but spiders <laughs> and centipedes yeah. <laughs> pulled across her right. Um, in there, a guy in a fire, and we see is like burnt skeleton. Did I imagine that? Or is that a different movie? I don't know. Um, well, Spectre burned up at the end. Hmm. Well, yeah, there was that too. Um, although I did like I like the frat, you know, the freeze frame. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah because that was such a thing in the 70s man they did oh, yeah all the time they would just and they, and usually it's it would that's how you would end and the credits would roll over top the, the freeze right frame. and I, I was kind of surprised it didn't do that here uh but yeah this is this is i don't know this is like perfect bad 70s filmmaking <laughs> drive-in trash <laughs> <laughs> oh man what else can you say? I don't think we can say anything else. No, nah, you said it all. Uh, yes, yeah, sir. We okay. we are, are we done? We are closing up. Yes, you have something to say? <laughs> uh, not about this film. I just was going to say uh, <laughs> what we have coming up next. Well, let's do that. Uh, hmm. Picked by our very own Bill Mulligan, not to be confused with Milligan, but Mulligan. No, no, so. no. And what, yeah. what's our film? Uh, it is from my favorite filmmaker, Mario Bava. And it's essentially, I, I, th I think, fairly, the chronology of these things is a little confusing, but I think this is his last completed film, uh, 19, I believe, 1977, Shock, which also has uh, Daria Nicolodi, who we just lost as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, this, has got, this is sort of a double whammy, one of the last Bava movies ever made, low budget. He didn't have the resources he had with others, but as we'll see, it has some of my favorite bits. It's got one of my favorite shocks, shock shots of all time, and uh, Daria is beautiful. So there, there's a lot is, to is like it, about it. Isn't yeah, this I, the one that's also known as Beyond the Door Two? Yep. Yes, because yeah. it has nothing yeah. to do with Beyond the Door. So you know, but that's that's the way they creative titling back then. I, I do remember it coming out as Beyond the Door yeah. Two. It, it, that that movie that movie made money, so therefore they used the title. It, it was we're just we're lucky they didn't call it Poseidon Adventure too. They could have done that as well. <laughs> yeah, they said that. All right, if you if you've watched this far, uh, we want to thank you. Uh, if you want to help uh, spread the word about this, you can share. That would be great. Hit the hit the subscribe button. That does wonders. Like the like buttons, dislike if you want to. If we didn't do this movie justice, let us know. We did, by the way. And notifications. <laughs> Don't forget your notifications. Your notifications. Hit mm -hmm. Smash that bell, as they say. Uh, give us some thoughts down below, your Girdler films that you like, uh, um, all that good stuff. Uh, we also want to take a moment, we'll get with you, Jeff, to thank our patrons. Oh, you uh, got it. 
Yeah. Without, without whom we would not be able to do uh, the Gruesome Magazine, the H&R, the Decades of Horrors, and the Heroes and Droids, and all the other special things we do. Uh, thank you all so very, very much. If you want to find out more about that, there's a link down below. Those are some fine, fine people. I know yes. a few of those folks. I do yeah, good you get all kinds of cool stuff, right? I mean, you get we we got these uh well, well you get to see decades of horror two weeks early or up to two weeks early. Yep. You, um, yep. you have early access to all the decades of horror now. Uh it was originally just this show, but it eventually also includes the eighties and the and the classic era now. Um and we also have some interesting uh pick collections from <laughs> lovely ladies and we have special wow oh. cat <laughs> oh, this cat one lucky viewer gets a cat okay uh, put them in a box and send them to you uh but a lot of other parts we check it out and we've got some we got some interesting ideas coming up for uh uh 2021 jeff you and i need to get together and execute one of those soon oh yeah yes all right, uh, and we'll just wrap this up. Jeff, Chad, Bill, thank you so much for joining me. This was a, a very interesting, fun discussion. I'm glad we talked about all the other movies as well. <laughs> thanks for having us on. Yep, thanks a lot. It's always fun. Oh, yeah. Ones we didn't have much to talk about. Yeah. We actually yeah. we did a lot, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we all right. We uh, filled up the time, man. All right, let's say good night. Good night, everybody. Good night. Yeah.